Okay, so this is part one of section 5.2 in the book we're doing, and it's basically eigenvalues and eigenvectors of powers of A. So we're going to first start off by proving if lambda and x are the eigenvalues and respective eigenvectors for A, well then lambda squared and x are eigenvalues and eigenvectors for A squared. So basically they have the same eigenvectors, but the lambda, the eigenvalues are going to change. So this first part isn't necessary, but for the beginner person trying to prove, it's very helpful. So I like to write out my given. My given is going to be my if part, if this is true. So this is my given. And the prove part. We want to prove the then part. And another thing I like to do before I start is let's think of a way we can show this. Like let's have a plan of how to prove. There's lots of different proving techniques. Um, but for this one, we're going to use the definition of what an eigenvalue eigenvector is. So we basically, in other words, if we want to prove lambda square and x are eigenvalue eigenvectors for A, then when we want to basically, i.e., we want to show, because this is actually the definition of what an eigenvalue and eigenvector of A is. So let's just write that to the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So that's what we need to show. We'll keep our eye on that. So our first step is just to use the given. Well, we're given lambda and x are eigenvalue eigenvectors for A. So similar for what we how we want to prove, we want to write out the definition of what that means. It's really our only first step. So same thing, the definition of an eigenvalue eigenvector says that we can write it as ax equals lambda x. That's given, the definition. My next step is I'm going to manipulate this by multiplying the left side by a. That's left multiply by a. So this step is because lambda is a constant, a scalar and a matrix are commutative. So we know that's not true of two matrices, but it is true of a scalar and a matrix. We don't really have to number, but I like two in this case. So what you see here is instead of grouping these two, I'm grouping the last two. And that's allowed in matrix multiplication, even with matrices, but this is a matrix and a vector, same thing. So this is the associative property. So I'm gonna point this out. We have AX here, and that's in our first step. So we can replace AX with what it's equal to. This is just a substitution. So instead of AX, I'm going to write what it's equal to. It's equal to lambda X. Again, that's the associative property again. These two, you group these two. And therefore, that's exactly what we're trying to prove. This is equal to what we set out to prove. So I know I'm done. Therefore, lambda squared QED, it has been demonstrated, or it has been shown. So it's not going to be a far stretch for this to turn to, and I'll show this at the end, using induction. So we can get review of that process. A couple notes before we go on. So just as we proved, eigenvalue for A is lambda, eigenvalue for 
a squared is lambda squared, we can see that the eigenvectors are the same for a and a squared, so only the eigenvalues change for the powers of a. Our next proof that we're going to do is if lambda and x are eigenvalue eigenvectors for a, and a is invertible, then 1 over lambda and x are eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a inverse. It's a very similar proof. Basically, let's write out the given and what we need to prove first. So basically, this is given. And we want to prove these are the eigenvalues, eigenvectors for A inverse, which is the same as showing the definition of that, which is A inverse x is equal to 1 lambda, 1 over lambda x. Our first step, again, our first step, lambda and x are eigenvalue eigenvectors of A. So we can start off with that definition, Ax equals lambda x, given left multiply by A inverse. So clearly this is the definition of inverse and I did the same thing. I did commutative property of a scalar and a matrix. It's scalar commutative. So this step, since lambda is a constant, remember though, if a is invertible, we do not have a lambda equals zero, so we are allowed to do this. We saw that on the previous video in 5.1. put little vectors on all my x's. So we set out to prove what we wanted to prove. That's why I wrote it out. So we are QED. It has been shown. And in lot, it's because this is the definition of eigenvalue eigenvectors. Quick question. So we can rewrite a to the minus 2 as a inverse squared because we can see that's equal. Exponential rules still are valid here. And so we can also switch those around. Oops. Should be easier. We can take the inverse of a squared to find it. Okay, so this is just an extension. If lambda and x are eigenvalues, eigenvectors of A, then lambda to the n and x are eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A to the n. So here's a proof by induction. So first are given. So with proof by induction, we have three steps. We're going to show it's true for the first one. We're really here for our second one. But we don't have to do this because we did it earlier. Pretty nice. So we're assuming true for some k, and it is a k less than n. So basically, we're going to write out our given here. a to the k x is equal to lambda to the k x. We want to prove true k plus 1, i.e. we want to prove. So to prove this, we're going to show that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So we're going to start with the left-hand side, transform it to the right. So this works, like I said, exponentials do work here, and it really is just regrouping. You write out all the a k plus ones, regroup all the ones to the right, and leave that one out, and it's the same thing. 
associative property. So regrouping that. And now for our given, that's our given. We need to use it. We'll replace it with that. So using the given, we're substituting for the given. So again, scalar commutative, what is AX equal to? It's our other given. AX is lambda X by definition of eigenvalue, eigenvector of A. And the left-hand side becomes the right-hand side. Q, E, D. We have demonstrated this, and we're done.